Crocodiles have long become perfect hunters, mostly thanks to their ability to ambush prey. Even their eyes are adapted for this hunting strategy, but sometimes centuries-old habits can play a cruel joke to animals. In 2015, a crocodile was found stuck in a dried-up creek bed on Cape York Peninsula in Australia. It was a period of drought back then, and for some reason the animal crawled into a huge mud hole and it couldn't get out of there. When people discovered it, the crocodile was quite alive, it seems, it didn't worry about what happened. It was just lying there, focusing on staying alive, no bother. How could it ever end up in a situation like that? Maybe the poor creature just lay in ambush, but got a bit carried away. After all, the crocodile couldn't possibly know dirt works like that, it's, well, just a crocodile. All of the prey must have gathered around it to watch the show. Na -na 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 -boo -boo. In fact, crocodiles can spend a lot of time in ambush. Waiting's not a problem for them when it helps get dinner. For example, some sources say the Nile crocodile is known to be one of the most patient predators in the world. It can wait for hours, days, or even weeks for the right moment to attack. Imagine if you had to sit still for at hmm. least an hour to eat a sandwich, because otherwise it'd run away. I couldn't. Okay, most likely our poor fellow tried to cross the dried up stream bed but made a mistake assessing its own weight, size, and depth of the mud hole. When it started raining and there was enough water, the crocodile calmly got out and went on about its business. But that was a month later. That's because crocodiles have a bunch of skills humans can only dream of. When reptiles don't have access to food or living conditions become extreme, they sort of switch to an emergency mode. Crocodiles save energy as much as they can, moving slowly or even lay motionless. Their heart rate slows down along with metabolism. Blood doesn't flow to organs that fast. It's believed that in this extreme energy saving mode, a crocodile can survive for up to three years. Three years! No wonder our guy endured his time trapped in the mud hole. But falling into the trap was not an accident. Of course, no one set up the mud trap to catch the crocodile, but the area where it got stuck used to have water. And water is a place where many dangers always lurk. It doesn't matter if you're a reptile or, say, a bird. Flamingos mainly feed on what can be found in the water. Crustaceans, mollusks, algae. Of course, they spend a lot of time in the water from a young age, and sometimes it costs them their lives. Baby flamingos can't fly yet, so they have to wander in search of drinking water, moving quickly at the same time. If they don't, the salt will have enough time to solidify around their thin legs. It looks as if someone tied quite heavy weights to the baby's legs. Flamingo with the salt buildup on its legs simply can't keep up with the rest of the flock, which means it's doomed. You get it, right? Even salt in water can be fatal. Okay, what about fresh water? Should everything be simpler there? Well, only if you forget that water tends to freeze. The Greek Lake Castoria, frozen over in the winter of 2019, trapped many birds that lived in the area. They just didn't expect the water they used to swim and eat in to suddenly become solid. And so they got stuck in the ice. Swans, pelicans, herons, everyone who remained in the water at night when the water froze were trapped in the ice. If not for the help of people, they probably would have died. This is not a rare situation. A cold snap often surprises birds, not only in Greece, their wet legs stick on the ice, sometimes the entire bird freezes to it. Keep in mind that it's not even a saline lake. Damn, I overslept. Though a similar story also happens with dolphins. In 2015, scientists first reported polar bears preying on white-beaked dolphins at Svalbard. It had seemed that catching a dolphin is way harder than a penguin or a fur seal. After all, they're quite large and don't crawl under the ice. But they can get trapped in it. The dolphins appear to have been trapped when they had to surface for air at a small opening in the ice. The strong northerly wind finished the job, and soon the bears got their ice cream. Well, we can only feel happy for them. Wildlife is cruel. And then I thought, what if animals began to fall into such traps because of people? After all, humanity strongly affects nature, and I'm not even talking about ecology. What if we somehow influence the intelligence of animals, and now they can't understand when they do stupid things that lead to death? Though you know what? It's always been that way. At least if we trust the fossil record and other things that help us glimpse into the past. Scientists discovered that both birds and mammals, including saber-toothed cats and dire wolves, were constantly stuck in ancient Peruvian tar pools. Moreover, the fossils date back to the late Pleistocene. That is, animals died about 15,000 years ago. Of course, at that time, people were already around, but they didn't have such a strong influence on wildlife as they do now. This means that animals fall into natural traps through their own fault. Humankind is acquitted. 
Moreover, animals are tricked by their own bodies sometimes. What's considered a superpower can be deadly. You probably know how important echolocation is to bats. They produce some of the loudest sounds in nature, then immediately listen to the echo to figure out what to do next. In fact, this is a rather interesting process, and I'll tell you about it someday. But for now, here's a fact. Human devices jam the echolocation of bats and constantly confuse them. The result is complete acoustic chaos. As if you were asking a question to your friend standing next to you, and then more people around you started talking. All at the same time. Okay, it seems like I acquitted humankind a bit prematurely. Doctor, I keep hearing voices. They tell strange things. Get some groceries, throw out the trash, pay for cable TV. What's cable TV, doctor? A similar thing happens to whales. Today, human activities have made the oceans too noisy, and whales, which use echolocation, are having a hard time. The constant noise and signals from human devices not only prevent animals from communicating, but also confuse them, forcing them to choose the wrong direction. According to one of the theories, this is why whales get washed up on a beach. They simply don't understand where they're swimming. Some experts also argue that, due to interference, whales mistake ships for their relatives, approach them, and then it becomes too late. Try to dodge a fast giant vessel controlled by a human who doesn't really care there might be animals around? In fact, ships have long been a serious threat to whales. The faster the ships and the bigger their number, the greater the danger. After colliding with a really massive vessel like a container ship, the whale gets fatally injured. Marine biologist and director of the Banayaf Ocean Initiative, Doug McCauley, says it's like being run over in one go by 3,000 semi-trucks. No chances. But even animals that don't know about echolocation can become victims of their bodies, like dogs. Their keen sense of smell can also become their demise. If the animal ends up on the Overton Bridge in Scotland, it's more than 49 feet high and looks quite ordinary, but dogs often leap off the parapet here for no apparent reason. And, well, the outcome shall be clear. For a long time, people couldn't understand what was the reason. There were talks about the curse. But in the end, it turned out the minks were to blame. The smell of urine from minks living under the bridge makes dogs want to immediately track down the animal, and they simply don't understand there's nothing behind the parapet. It's made of stone, and you can't see the ravine. Listen, people are to blame again, and I haven't even mentioned bees yet. Several studies claim power lines, or rather their electromagnetic fields, have a negative effect on bees. Seems like in one of my previous videos, I already mentioned that bees depend a lot on electromagnetic fields. No wonder that when such fields are created artificially, bees can't navigate in space, have problems reproducing and pollinating, they even lose part of their ability to remember various important things. But don't worry, wild nature has plenty of ways to fight insidious electricity. Squirrels often cause serious power outages. In the summer of 2013 alone, 24 states in the United States reported at least 50 power outages caused by squirrels. They bite wires, sneak into transformers, they even cut us out of the internet. Some people call these the most effective cyber attacks. And that's not all. Animals also target nuclear sites. It's known that ground squirrels made their way to the Air Force Base in Montana and dug a tunnel under the fence, bypassing motion detectors. That sounds like something from Mission Impossible. After making their way into the base, the ground squirrels started biting the electrical cables. I'm starting to think animals are waging a war with us, and we don't even know about it. At the same time, squirrels, the creatures who leave thousands of people without electricity, can die simply because of their own bodies. Squirrels' teeth, like teeth of other animals, like beavers, never stop growing. This is a fairly fast process balanced by the need to constantly crunch something. This is how squirrels grind teeth and maintain balance. But if they don't, they literally become saber-toothed animals. And this is a really creepy sight to behold. Also, an animal with such a set of tusks can hardly eat normally, which means it'll die. Well, you get the idea. You have to grind your teeth every day. It's very important. Don't tell me how to live my life. Damn. Seems like mom was right all along. And somewhere at this point, you should probably feel proud. Yes, we humans set up traps for animals, but something like this will never happen to us. Our teeth don't grow like crazy, we don't have echolocation, and we don't get stuck in salt. Alas, in terms of weird problems, we could challenge any animal, because none of them fall into their own traps. Meanwhile, people often set up various mechanisms in their own homes to protect themselves from thieves. For example, they attach a handgun to a door hoping the criminal will be neutralized on the spot, but the owners of the weapon become its victims much more often than the perpetrators. I see now why the Darwin Awards are only given to humans. 
My favorite story is about a guy who attached a shotgun to the back door, then apparently forgot about it and went to feed the squirrels. Thankfully, he survived. Listen, what if the squirrels were the ones who set it all up? See you later.